John was a typical American man. He'd wake up, roll out of bed first thing in the morning, and clamber to his senses. He'd sometimes search around his house in search of other people. John had a tendency of forgetting he lived alone and that nobody loved him. John lived in the ample town of Winchester, Illinois, a quaint little town in the nice suburbs of Illinois. He would go each day on to work in his beautiful Volkswagen Beetle. He saved up for this car, and he loved it, no matter how awful it was. But today, he was blessed. He didn't have work today. Today was shopping day. A day where he could go out into the town and do what he wanted. Driving past his neighbor's house, John knew he was blessed. The great fields of Illinois surrounded him and his ability to follow basic traffic safety laws certainly meant he could stay in this area for as long as he desired. The Beetle sometimes had trouble being controlled, and maybe that was just a leftover of his inability to really drive while in the army. Regardless what it was, John was happy, alone in his car, as he always was, with no questions about if he should possibly have a secondary person with him, or if, you know, that curb he just hopped would be covered by his insurance, because John didn't give a f- John, very courteous of stop signs, always would check both sides before proceeding after hitting one. And while he had some troubles with exactly how to use his turn signals, nobody really cared because nobody really drove on the roads of Winchester, Illinois. Though I guess if you told John that, he'd probably object and say there were tons of people who drove around in Winchester, Illinois, and he totally wasn't the only driver this early in the morning, and that he totally has good reason to stop about a full car's length before a stop sign. But regardless, this is John's story, so I guess I shouldn't be bashing on him, so. Continuing from his humble abode, he drove deeper into the town. More and more houses dotted the landscape as the fields that he loved so slowly faded out. He was going into town today for a couple of reasons. To begin, he really had to buy some more clothing. His military fatigues were getting a little smelly, and he honestly probably shouldn't be wearing them just walking around. Second, he wanted to show how good of a driver he was. Not to anyone in particular, but really to himself, because he knew he was a good driver. He could follow traffic safety laws with his handy, you know, turn signals and, and other various things, and the ability to stop at a stop sign long before it is requested. John, upon driving down the streets, began to see other cars, and he knew he was rewarded for this act of following basic traffic safety. Many other Volkswagen Beetles, much like the car he himself drove, assured John that he was just another normal member of society. But after a nice blast of pollen hits his window, he remembers he needs some gas. Pulling in at the best gas station in town, the Pohona, or at least that's how he thinks it's pronounced, he has really no clue, he made sure to pull up right next to the pump. John remembers he lives in the great state of New Jersey, meaning he's gonna have to go all the way back to the teller in order to get some gas. Walking up to the teller, he has a little bit of an issue finding the door, but manages to meet his good friend Mike. Mike tells him that this is not New Jersey, this is Illinois, and they pump their own gas. John doesn't really like that response, and decides to just, you know, leave without any gas. You know, who needs gas anyway? He can drive around on a half of a tank. He's John. He does what he wants to do in this house. However, he is quickly punished for his hubris. His car really not wanting to start in any way, shape, or form upon getting into it. But John is a military man. He powers through this. You know, he fought through Vietnam and the Evron Wars. He can drive a car. Driving is not his specialty, though, and as he sat, definitely hopping yet another curb, John tried to push these actions that he was doing out of his mind in a moment. Once again, though, he had a different objective today. It wasn't for gas, it wasn't the cleanest car that was now covered in pollen and weird lighting. No, he needed to buy some clothing. So John sat at the stop sign before the turn, and after figuring out all his lights, finally made his way to the parking lot where he would park his beautiful Volkswagen Beetle. He had a little bit of a problem turning into the parking lot, but 
we don't judge John for his horrible driving skills. We do judge him, however, for his parking skills. John claims he is a much better parker than anyone else in town. And while everyone else in town doesn't really speak to John, because there isn't a lot of people in this town who really like John or know who he is, if they knew who he was, they probably would be bothering him for his horrible parking you know, abilities because they're abysmal and they honestly make your eyes water as you look at him desperately trying to get between those lines and fail completely. If you didn't know better, you would think John was drunk while driving, but luckily, he is not. Walking back to the beautiful sidewalk, John makes his way towards his favorite store. This store is nice because it's cheap, and he knows the owner. John makes sure to look both sides before crossing the road, and then he crosses. Heading over, he wonders if his store is open, and upon seeing the open gated door, he realizes that it is open. He opens in and says hi to his do- good buddy, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy sells good stuff, so John takes a look. He needs to get out of these army fatigues, so he looks around and he finds some stuff to wear. You know, some something casual, something the wife will like. Oh wait, no, John doesn't have a wife. Something he will like, something he can imagine himself in as he puts it on. So he doesn't really have to imagine, he, he's just going to wear it. John needs to blend in with the town, he doesn't need to look like a soldier. He talks to Jimmy, the two of them talk, and Jimmy, feeling bad for John, you know, lets John go without paying. Uh, Jim, Jimmy's a good man. Jimmy, Jimmy's John's friend. They are friends. John then decides to leave. And then he remembers. It's Sunday. Church day. And there just so happens to be a church right here. John's day couldn't get better. He sees a crosswalk sign, but no crosswalk. John doesn't care. John just crosses. John likes jaywalking. You know, he earned that as a member of the United States Armed Services. He crosses and he enters the Grand Church. He's, he's a careful man, though. He made sure to close the doors behind him. He's respectful in the house of the Lord. He says hi to everyone else that is in this building. You know, the local lifeguard who always wears his uniform around the church. The Starbucks barista who's really cool and they vibe. And then the, the local police officer. He then makes sure to pay attention to the past year's lectures. Because he is a good man of God, and he makes sure to stay in tune with the word of the Lord. The lecture is long, and after several hours have passed, John is finally ready to go home. He has no one to go home to, so nobody really knows why John leaves early. This is the only time he interacts with other people. But at the very least, he is close to the parking lot. John can easily get to his parking lot from the church, because he hasn't gone very far from his car. And while making his way over to his car, he finds once again that his car kind of dislikes starting. So John takes a little bit to get the car started. Eventually, John is back on the road. Driving in his beautiful Volkswagen Beagle, he looks around at the other people's cars and he realizes that his black model is simply the best. His actually follows traffic safety laws using the beautiful turn signals installed in his Volkswagen Beetle. Making a nice right turn at a perfect speed, John realizes the roads aren't really busy today. Everybody must still be in church. After all, he did leave a little bit early to, you know, get home and get started on a meal. For him and his wife, oh wait, he has no wife. So for him, because he eats alone, because he has no friends, and he has no family. Seeing a military vehicle on the road, John is careful to avoid it. Uh, he doesn't like military vehicles, so he turns into illegally into a parking lot and uses it to cut through to get around the vehicle, rather than just doing the simple thing of going around the vehicle on the road. It matters not. John eventually finds his way back to the road and, going at a high speed, begins to zoom down with his Volkswagen Beetle down those roads. John plays around with his wheel and his hazard lights a little bit, making you wonder if John had drank something the previous night. But no, John is just kind of bad at driving sometimes. He speeds around a corner at 40 miles per hour. If there was a pedestrian, they'd be dead. But luckily for John, there is no pedestrian, and there's also no vehicle or else his insurance would kill him, meaning somebody would die either way. John drives pretty fast down an area that's known for having kids in the driveway, but John doesn't really care. Hit a kid or not, it's not his kid because he's alone. John has no family, no friends, and he barely even remembers the last time he saw a child. In fact, John begins to question if children are real at all. But John is here. He's he's home. He slows down. He sees that familiar, awfully colored house. And he parks in the front driveway. He's too lazy today to back in. 
I mean, the Volkswagen has gone through a lot, running on zero to no gas. He realizes he left all his doors open when he left in the morning. John has nothing worthwhile stealing, because John is John, and he has no one to protect at home, or pets to get out, so John just kind of resigns for the day, realizing it's time to go back to bed, and get ready for the start of yet another amazing American day.